it's the first ever, you know, the NBA playing games. I think it's a really interesting conversation, the role of them and if they're going to stay. We know that there have been guys who've bashed it. LeBron last year, you know, was for it. Now, obviously, with his team in it, he's against it. The Mavericks were very vocal against it, which I think it's funny because once they kind of solidified themselves as, you know, avoiding it, I didn't really hear the same complaints I did earlier. But nevertheless, you know, we had the first two games yesterday. Both were not very exciting all the way through. The Hornets game was a blowout. Uh, they, you know, they were not ready for the Pacers. And the Celtics handled the Wizards, how we just talked about. But, Bridge, you know, going more broad, I want to know what you think overall on this idea of the play-in. Do you think it stays? Do you think it's the right move for the NBA to have these 7-8 matchups, 9-10 matchups? Like, what do you think of the whole formatting here? Yeah, um, great points, Ryan. I have a lot to say here. I actually love the play-in, the whole idea of it, because – I mean, I see it as a neat way to sort of incentivize the last two weeks of the season. I mean, just think about it. Like the last two weeks of the season, it's always just a countdown until the playoffs. I mean, what can you really remember from like those past two weeks? I mean, usually it's arguments for who's all NBA and we'll, we'll get to that later in the show, but now there's this play in tournament and that's really fueled a lot of teams. Let's look at Washington. You said it last segment, they're 17 and six over the last 23 games. They were 15 and 28 at the all-star break. And now they're 34 and 38. And I think the play-in was a huge motivation for Westbrook, Beal, and that whole squad to really fight because they knew that they only had to get to 10. Of course, they ended up getting to eight, but the fact that there was this chance for them to, to get into the playoffs without having to go all the way into the top eight, that made the last couple of weeks, the last month, just a fight for the Washington Wizards. And I always thought, you know, when you talk about a play-in tournament, I always assumed it would be, okay, seven plays 10 and eight plays nine, just a regular uh, tournament style, right? But I kind of like this because it almost rewards the better team. It gives the seven the chance to, okay, just, you know, win one game, secure your spot, you get extra rest. I feel like that's pretty fair um, because if you do it the other way, then it it kind of, it's almost like March Madness style where the seven, like each team sort of gets hurt equally, whereas this gives the higher seeds more of an advantage, which they deserve based on their performance and their standing throughout the season. And another point I want to make is, Okay, last night's action, it wasn't the most exciting, right? But again, look, these are mediocre teams. And we got very lucky this year because in, I don't know, just over an hour, the Warriors and Lakers will be tipping off. That's LeBron versus Steph. That's playoff DNA. That is must-watch basketball. And you know Adam Silver is very happy about that. This, um, I believe it'll probably be the most-watched game this season so far. It might even be more than the finals in a couple of months. I mean, you got Steph and LeBron one game. Of course, the loser will still have a chance to play for that eight seed, but I mean, this is, it doesn't get much better than this. This is like a March Madness winner take all kind of game. And I feel terrible for the Phoenix Suns because they get the winner of this game in the first round. I mean, that is, that is a brutal way to start your playoffs after finishing second in the West. I mean, you work so hard and you can get LeBron in the first round. I mean, that's awful. I feel bad for Suns fans out there. I mean, that is a tough, tough draw. Yeah. I, the thing on the plane is I love the idea of it. And the number one thing you talk about is gives team hope. Um, I have a friend who's a Wizards fan, shout out Jack. And he was texting me the other day how, you know, he normal season, he would have given up. They were the 15 seed. But the idea, the lure of getting a 10 seed and still fighting for something kept him and the team invested. It kept them. They ended up stacking wins. They won on a big win streak. I think they won eight in a row at some point in the year to get into that plan. And they did lose it and everything like that. But I think that ability is huge. It's just on the execution because I think there's another question. Do teams really want to be in the plan? We saw the Hornets yesterday. They had no business of playing basketball. We saw the Spurs, too. I know that game's going on. I believe they're down, you know, five, six, whatever, at halftime. Uh, they bought out a starter. They bought out LaMarcus Aldridge, you know, towards the middle of the season here. Any team that's really competing for a title and trying to make the playoffs, you don't buy a guy like that out who is starting on your team, playing 30 minutes a game. So I do think that's a question. Do teams really want there? Do the Spurs deserve it? You know, did the Hornets deserve it? Do the Pacers deserve a chance to play the Wizards for the playoffs. I think that's another really interesting question. But you talked about the game that we'll have in an hour, and we'll give predictions, we'll preview that game in a minute. And that's why I think this conversation is kind of irrelevant, because once we got a matchup like Steph versus LeBron, like the Lakers and Warriors, any chance of this going away went out the window. Because as you said, Adam Silver is the happiest. He's the kid in the candy store right now getting this game. It'll get huge numbers, as you talked about. Celtics Wizards game also got huge numbers. I'm sure he loves that. Over two and a half million people, I believe, watch that game. So I do think from that aspect, you know, obviously that'll be an awesome game. But two games yesterday were a wash. They were, they were not 
you know, interesting games. They didn't feel like we were watching playoff teams. I was watching, you know, the first quarter of Hornets Pacers did not feel like two playoff teams. It didn't really even feel like one, you know, give credit to the Pacers putting up 144, but it didn't have the same aura. And it's weird because these stats don't count for the playoffs. I don't think they count for the regular season. So what are they? They're really not playoff games. They kind of are, you know, that it's kind of weird in that aspect. And the other thing you talked about is the format with the seven, eight, nine, ten. And I think it's interesting because we talked about before, obviously, you'd assume seven, ten, you'd assume eight versus nine, right? That would be the logical play. I don't have a huge problem with this, and I get why they did it, because it allows for bigger matchups as we have the Warriors and Lakers. You know, those two teams would have played the Spurs and the Grizzlies, probably destroyed both them, and then they would have never faced in this year's playoffs. Seven and eight, I don't assume that they would have, you know, reached the conference finals or anything like that. But with this, you know, we get those really good matchups with the Warriors and Lakers, and the loser is not automatically eliminated, because I don't think that would be fair if it was, as you said, a March Madness style where winner goes home, you know, one guy is a bad shooting night and you're done. Those guys, they got the seven and eight seeds. They deserve the one game cushion and they will get it because obviously the loser of that game will get a chance to grab the eight with the Grizzlies and Spurs winner. So I think from that aspect, it's fair. Um, you know, I'll go out and say right now, if the Knicks were in it, I'd be killing it. If they were a seven, eight, I'd be bashing the hell out of it. If they're an eight, nine or a, sorry, a nine, 10, I'd be loving it. So I do think it's, you know, it really depends on your team, where you're at. But I do think it's a really interesting concept. And as you said, we're talking about it. And I think that's the biggest thing because normally, as you said, the last you know, month of the year is pretty boring, right? We're, it's kind of we're going at the narratives. We're looking at the awards, which we will get to, as you mentioned. But the play ins that offer a different dimension, we had Curry dropping 46 the other day to get that eight. You know, in a normal year, it would have been, you know, who knows what's going on there. But, yeah, I agree with what you said. I do definitely think there are cons and they need to work on that because I don't want to see teams in the play-in that don't want to be in the play-in. I want these teams to want to fight for the playoffs and give 100% effort on the court. So however they can do that, I think that this play-in could be a thing that's really there for a long time. Yeah, no, I think there's, like you said, there's two sides to the equation here. And we've only had a night of play-in basketball under our belt, maybe a night and a half or a night and a quarter, whatever the case may be now. But I think we'll have a much better idea about a week from now when we're play-ins all in the book. Okay, how did this work? Do we really want this? So it's still pretty early. And I also agree. We have sort of have the LeBron mentality of we love the play-in until we're in it. You know, I feel yeah. like we'd both be flooding Adam Silver's inbox right now with some, you know, carefully worded messages about the play-in game and why it's, uh, why it's not a good idea. 